in early 1970s, world's leading air forces were relying primarily on supersonic fighters. But many smaller and especially third world air forces were still operating a large number of older subsonic types. When India and Pakistan confronted once more in December of 1971, subsonic fighter aircraft formed the backbones of their air forces. In case of Pakistan, it was F-86 Sabre. 139 F-86E and F models were available when the hostilities started, which made it the most numerous combat aircraft in the Pakistani Air Force. Sabres were armed with six 12.7mm machine guns, they could carry bombs and rockets and some of them were equipped with A9B Sidewinders. Sabre's closest equivalent on the Indian side was Hawker Hunter. With 112 examples available in 1971, Hunter was only the third most numerous Indian combat aircraft, but it still represented about 18% of its available force. Hunter had more firepower than Sabre with four 30mm cannon, and it could also carry bombs and rockets, but Indian examples were not equipped with air-to-air -air missiles. Both sides allocated lots of their available combat sorties to counter-air operations, that is, attacking enemy air bases and radars. But this time, lessons were learned, and catching and eliminating the majority of enemy's air force on the ground was impossible. But both sides were happy if they could close down an airbase for a few hours, and maybe destroy a couple of aircraft on the ground. These strikes would also force the enemy to use large resources for air defense duties, since Sabre and Hunter were both used for such airstrikes, as well as for air defense, their clashes were inevitable. One of the problems Pakistan was facing was relative proximity of their air bases to Indian airspace, combined with the relative scarcity of low-level radars. Combat air patrols were flown constantly in expectation of Indian airstrikes. Mooded Air Base was particularly vulnerable, as it was possible to use mountain ranges to the north to amass the approach. Pakistani defenses could probably get no more than three minutes of warning, which meant that there was little chance of intercepting Indian aircraft before they could perform their attacks. Number 15 squadron equipped with F-86 F Sabres was maintaining constant combat air patrol since the early morning of December the 4th. But they failed to prevent an attack by Indian hunters led by squadron leader De Rosario. Two fully armed and fueled F-86s were hit, and the hunters managed to get away. At 10.30, Flight Lieutenant Mujahid Salik and Flying Officer Sarfaraz Tour were directed by ground radar control to intercept a pair of hunters heading towards the base. Before the two Sabre pilots were able to intervene, the Indian hunters have already finished their attack and they were now egressing. Pakistani pilots managed to spot one of the Indian hunters and they were maneuvering behind it. The wingman, flying officer Tour, was looking for the second hunter and he realized that he was behind them. The hunters were egressing in trail formation and the sabers placed themselves right between the leader and the wingman. Tour instantly went into a hard break and blacked himself out in the process.
The Indian pilot attempted to follow and get a gun solution, but he eventually quit and went to join the other hunter pilot. In the meantime, Pakistani leader Flight Lieutenant Salik was chasing the other hunter, and he eventually managed to achieve hits as the Indian pilot came up against the hill crest east of Murid. The Indian pilot, flying officer Sudhir Tiagi of No. 27 Squadron from Patankot was killed. Some Indian online sources give a different picture. According to them, Tiagi was able to shoot down one Pakistani aircraft that was on the tail of his leader. He was then attacked by two sabers and one mirage. Tiagi fought valiantly, but he was eventually defeated. He supposedly ejected and was captured. This fact was reportedly broadcasted by Pakistani radio on 5th December, and Tiagi is one of 54 Indian military personnel officially listed as missing in action, which are believed by many in India to have been imprisoned by Pakistan and possibly still alive to this day. Regarding this air combat, Pakistani sources don't mention any mirages being evolved in it, nor admit any losses. The official Indian history of the 1971 war doesn't claim that any Pakistani aircraft were shot down by Indian fighters in the Western Front on 4 December. It does, however, admit losing three hunters to Pakistani aircraft, which matches Pakistani claims. These other two claims might be the topic of future videos, and if you're interested in seeing them reenacted, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter or donating on PayPal to keep the channel in business. And of course, keep watching Showtime 112.